greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh, this is Pastor Kefas Simon one more time. Today I want to remind you about silencing your own penin. In the book of First Samuel chapter number 1, the story, we know the story of the man called Elkanah who would go to Shiloh every year to make a sacrifice to the Lord every year. And whenever he would go to that place, he would go with his two wives, Penina and, and Hannah. And the Bible says that Penina, you know, had children, but Hannah did not have any. And because of that, every time when they would go out, Elkanah would make sure that he gives to Penina his portion and to all his sons, the portion that was theirs. But when it comes to Hannah, he would give her a double portion, which means he would give her what was hers and another one, just to say, because he loved her. That's why he gave her a double portion. And we see that Penina would always and always um, attack or provoke Hannah of the fact that she did not have children. But the Bible also says here that it was God who actually closed the womb of, of Hannah. It was not a decision. It was not her doing. It was the Lord. But I see that it was very painful to her because when you study the scriptures, you will realize that tears had to come out whenever she would go through this experience and year after year she would keep crying and the husband would come and say am i not enough you know for you that you keep on crying why are you so troubled but she was never satisfied with the fact that the husband loved her she needed to have a child you know i always say one of the best ways to silence your penina is to become that which god has intended you to become that which God has planned for your life, if you become exactly that, your penina will be silenced. But also there are lessons, beautiful and brilliant lessons that I'm just learning from the woman called Hannah here, the, and from a character as well. Very, very less important lessons that we can take home. Um, one of them is that Hannah chose to be silent. Whenever Penina would speak and say, you, Baron, you don't have a child, the Bible says she chose to be silent. She never opened her mouth and start arguing with the enemy. You see, one of the mistakes that we do is to start opening our mouth and starting to argue with the enemy. We need to know when and to who we should open our mouth. This woman was very smart because she would keep quiet in front of the enemy. But when she gets to the house in a private place, she would open her, her mouth unto the Lord. The one that she knew that this one, when I open my mouth, she will hear my prayers. So, so she, she never allowed, she never stooped too low to start arguing with the enemy. She never allowed herself to go down to the level of flesh. Because, because the enemy will try to bring you down to the level of flesh. And this woman called Hannah, a woman of wisdom, even though she was in pain of the fact that she didn't have children, she refused to go down to the level of penina and start arguing with her and telling her this and that. But instead, she chose to be silent. We need to be quiet sometimes. Sometimes we talk too much. I always say, sometimes the enemy does not have enough information about what's going on in your life, in your marriage, and in your family. And it is us who go around telling the world what's going on with our lives. And the next thing, the enemy uses the same thing that you've been saying about your own children. And he brings them back to you and he hits you hard with those things. So she decided to be silent when the enemy was provoking her. Number two, I need to state this one as a fact, that every one of us needs a penina in their lives. In order for us to become that which God has ordained and planned for us, we need a penina. Because a penina is that one that pushes you out of comfort zone. Is that one that says to you, you are not here, you have not yet arrived, you can't sit here and relax. She will push you out of your comfort zone. I, I must say that uh, the Jewish people, when they were relaxed, you know, in Babylon, they, they needed a Haman. Haman had to be, had to be their, their, their penina to push them out. That is the man who even decided to erect the cross 
for Mordecai. That is the man who pushed them out of their comfort zone. We all need a comfort, uh, somebody to push us out of a comfort zone. David needed the wife of Potiphar to push him out of Potiphar's house in order for him to reach his destination. He needed those guys, those prisoners to forget about him in order for him not to quickly rush into his destiny so that he can enter at the right time. So we all need a penina in one way or the other in our lives. Famine was also a penina in the lives of the brothers of Joseph to push them out of Canaan so that they can finally find themselves in Egypt so that they can meet their brother. So whatever that you are going through that is not good, that is painful, just look at it in the other way and see it as a penina to keep you on your toes so that you can keep on serving God and worship God the way you should. You are not supposed to think that the fact that penina is there, it means God is punishing you. No, he's not punishing you. In fact, we all need a penina. In fact, if you can go to everybody and ask them if the got a little penina, you'll find that almost everybody has got something that is bothering them, something that they're praying about, something that they need. You know, you know, Paul needed a thorn in the flesh. That was a penina for him to keep reminding him of where God found him because the thorn in the flesh, history shows that that was the eyes that he, uh, that had problems. And when he had that particular problem of the eyes, because of the lightning that struck him down the day he met the Lord, it kept on reminding him of what God has done in his life. So we all need a penina in our lives. Number three, don't cry when people who are supposed to understand you fail to understand and they accuse you. You know, when this woman now uh, went to the prophet Eli, Eli accused her, no, you are drunk to him. You, there's something wrong with you. God, we know you are drunk. And, and, and something good here, you can cry on somebody whom you expect or they will support you and they choose to reject you. You can actually stop doing that. I mean, if you go to church and you start to pray, at this time, remember Ophni and Phineas were in charge at this time. They were in charge at the temple and, and, and he could not be, and she could not be understood. What is the prayer of this woman? What is it that she wants? Maybe she's drunk. Auntie, she was not drunk. And she did not give up, even when those she expected Robato support, but no support. You know, people are like that. Sometimes the people who expect Robato Teka, they will not be there to support you. But do not stop. Keep on persisting. Keep on praying, like this woman called the Penina. Um, the last thing that is very important is that when Samuel arrives, do not give up praying. Continue with thanksgiving. Now, after Samuel came, after Samuel came, the Bible says Hannah took Samuel to the Lord as she promised. She took Samuel to the Lord as she promised. I wonder how many people can do that. Many people are flooding churches because they are looking for something. The day they receive their Samuel, they are nowhere to be found. Because people are just looking for the benefits from the Lord and they do not want him. But this woman is a good example, Hannah. When she needed the Lord, God came through for her. And the fact that God came through for her, it did not stop her from praying. In fact, she continued even more. And she actually even gave the son to the Lord. You see, it is very important that when God has done a miracle for you, you do not give up praying. Do not stop praying. Do not stop serving him. Do not stop worshipping him. That is very, very important. Um, and, and as I close, I want you to know that the best way to silence your penina it's not by arguing with them it's by being the best that god has intended you to be it's not by competing with them but it's by being the best if god has ordained you to be a baker be the best baker they can ever be if god has ordained you to be a nurse be the best nurse they can ever be if god has ordained you to be a security guard be the best if god has ordained you to be the pastor be the best when you are the best and you are living according to the purpose of God for your life, your penina will soon be silenced. I want to prophesy as I go that your Samuel is coming. Your Samuel might have delayed, but your Samuel is coming. Don't forget, it was God who closed that womb and it's the same God who opened that womb. Maybe as I speak, things are closed. It's God who closed those things and it is God who opened those things. Your Samuel is coming. It's around the corner. Don't give up and start arguing with penniness and wasting your time. Start focusing on the God who is the one who created you. May the Lord bless you. Don't forget, 
your Samuel is around the corner. Do not give up yet. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.